Hey, Rhonda, this is Justin. How's it going? It's going great, Justin. How are you this evening? I'm great. Glad to uh, get you on the line here. How's rehearsal going? It's going great. And we got out early today, so who knew? Awesome. <laughs> so who are you rehearsing with right now? I am rehearsing with Jeff Beck right now. Awesome. Yeah, still, you've been touring Ooh. with him for quite a while, huh? Yeah, I have. You know what? I started... Um, yeah, I started with him right after Prince, so like 2000, I've been with Jeff since 2010, wow. four years now. Wow. Yeah. Well. And we're getting ready to do this blast-off double, double bill summer tour with uh, ZZ Top, so it's going to be, <laughs> uh, it's going to be hot. Yeah, <laughs> that's crazy. Well, I guess we'll, we'll try to get more into it. Um, I'll introduce you to my co-host, Dustin. Hey, Rhonda, it's nice to talk with you. Hey, how are you? Great to, great to speak to you also. To get us started here, can you talk to us uh, about how you, I, I guess it, it sounds like you had a, quite a musical family and how you got interested in playing the bass. I did. My my entire family would, you know, except my father probably played. I have two brothers and one sister, and I was the youngest in my family, so everybody was already doing stuff. But um, I have one brother who is... We're about 15 months apart, so we were kind of competitive. I was kind of competitive with him, and I was a little bit closer to him and the things that he was interested in doing. Because I have an older sister, but she played clarinet, so that was kind of kind of boring. <laughs> so he brought a bass home one day, and it looked really cool in the case, and he just said to me, don't touch it. <laughs> <laughs> and there it began, you know. He's still a bass player. He's a great bass player, and we still laugh about that. Uh, to this day. It's a pretty hilarious story, but it was completely because of him, so Lord knows what else I would have been playing if, if he brought it home. <laughs> but it was the bass. That's great. So then you ended up uh, going to university and studying jazz, and uh, during that time, did you you start touring with a fem all-female group? Is that right? That That is right. You know, I probably should have i didn't i didn't finish my degree unfortunately um because that was a choice that i made um that i didn't i didn't really want to be a teacher or go along that side of things i wanted to do more performance and uh at that time um there was a really cool band that was around all females um and they could play and uh it was a good experience i just figured that i was going to get more out of it that's really more where i wanted to go so then so, how how did you, like, talk to us about the transition from um, college and playing with all these women into, uh, you know, all the big Canadian artists and stuff that you ended up working with? Yeah. It's a <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just start the ball rolling. It's, it's like the same kind of thing. I just started the ball rolling. I wanted to play, but uh, I've always done all kinds of styles, so... Just got older, got into the city of Montreal, where I got a little bit more access, because when I, when I grew up um, in the suburbs of Montreal, when I went to high school and even elementary school, I still was playing bass when I was very young, um, and in a lot of garage bands and a lot of things. And just to preface what I'm going to say, also, the school music program that we had in elementary school and high school was really exceptionally good. So that really, really helped um, for me to read music and... We were doing orchestra stuff and, and, and pretty good, pretty good reproductions when we were uh, in in high school. So it was a really, really good uh, thing to do, learning solfege, ear training, all of that stuff. Um, so when I was younger, I started going a, a lot in the direction of rock and roll. Loved that uh, when I was younger. A lot of Jimi Hendrix, Led Zeppelin, all of that kinds of stuff. Um, but it's not really something when I got older that I could make a living from. Uh, when I was in college or coming out of college, what people, uh, my peers then were doing was more of um, more of a jazz thing. They were playing in jazz clubs uh, because that was more of the standard uh, then. There was also the Top 40 circuit um, at that time. And I got with these girls, and that was kind of, I kind of liked it. I liked what they were doing, and I liked it because um, they were playing a lot more funk and a lot more just basically American music. Um, that I wasn't really accustomed to as much because uh, I grew up in Canada. So what they have on the radio at that time was a little bit different. More uh, Anne Murray, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> no disrespect to Anne Murray. She's a great singer and songwriter. She's amazing, but, you know, that kind of stuff. So 
one thing leads to another, you know, boys. We could talk about this this subject for for hours. <laughs> So you were you were doing more of that funk stuff and then getting more into the jazz and you eventually uh, won a Juno Award for Best Contemporary Jazz Album? I did with another group uh, that I met. You know, again, Montreal, I think, uh, back then was a great place uh, to, to be a bass player and to uh, watch music because they supported, uh, they supported original music, first of all, which is not something that happens as much, especially like I live here in California, which is Hollywood's a little bit different. You know, it's completely different when you're playing clubs and the way that things are set up here. But um, it was an absolutely great environment for that and for fusion and for jazz. So that's why it was very popular. We had a, st- they still have that, but there are some great bass players there, like Alan Caron, for instance, one of my favorite jazz players, amazing player with a group called Uzeb. Those cats were, ju- were just around in those days playing in the clubs. It was um, a different kind of energy, and there were also some great straight-ahead, just regular jazz players. So um, kind of diverted a little bit, but Montreal was great for that at that time. They also had a top 40 circuit, so that's where I went. Always try to use the same principles, too, when I work with people. Love the music, respect the music first, you know, and give 100% yeah, for sure. to the music. It was just one thing kind of led to another, but one of the main things that really helped in the end, of course, was, um, you know, coming to America, definitely. Not to sound like an, like an Eddie Murphy movie. <laughs> yeah, There's no, much it's... more opportunity here, you know, much more, more styles, more just more everything. Well, I guess, uh, talk to us a bit about, you ended up meeting Sheila E. in Germany, and then and that, le- that led to Prince, and is that how you ended up coming to America? Is that... Yeah, you know, I, yes, I still lived in Canada at the time. I actually first met Sheila E. in, in California at a NAMM show. I was working, again, with a, with a buddy of mine, Kat Dyson, who actually happened to be in that girls' band in Montreal at that time. That's how, that's how close friends we are. Um, but we met Sheila in, um, in California first for a NAMM show. We were um, doing duos, duets, uh, repping a guitar company called Godan in Canada. And we met her there. She was really cool. Then we went to the Music Mesa in Germany, which is, which is the same type of show. And she was there also. And there was definitely a smaller contingent of Americans there at that time because we were overseas. So uh, we were aware of each other. And uh, at that time, she was, I think she was going to be the band leader for Prince and put a new band for him together. So they were excited about that. So she was looking for people. But in the end, it didn't work out uh, for whatever reason. Sheila ended up doing something else, but she did pass on um, my package to him, and eventually they got in touch. So it was really, really great. So I guess, what was it like then, us being in Minnesota, we're huge Prince fans, and uh, you know <laughs> we follow all that. We've actually had a few uh, different people that have played with Prince uh, on the show over the years. Talk to us, uh, I guess, about how that was for you, like meeting him, and uh, and then you ended up playing with him for a really long time. Yeah, I started with Prince in 1996, and the last time we worked together was 2009, so some people get the years wrong, but that's, you know, throughout 13 years, definitely what was um, great training, great friendship, great, you know, funk army, definitely. That's a, that's a lot of time. I got a lot of badges for that, I think. But I'll never forget the first time that I met him. Very, very cool. Um, I I flew up there, didn't know what to, what was going to happen, and uh, went to Paisley Park. And uh, <laughs> he was just as usual, decked out head to toe. <laughs> you know, at that time I always tell the story. He he was putting a little blonde in his hair. That was still the time actually when he had slave written on the side of his face. Still at that time. Wow. When I met him, so he was still um, going through that thing. I guess he, with Warner Brothers, he was still in the contract, and uh, just. Man, he just is who he is, charismatic, in- incredible, handsome, very well-dressed, with the blonde streaks in his hair. You know, they had it going on, so it was a little intimidating at first, but, uh, you know, you can't, you, can't, you can't let him see you sweat. <laughs> he hung out for about three days the first time that I met him, and all I had to do, because really when I was coming from where I was musically at that time, I wasn't a huge Prince fan. So I didn't know all of his music, so and there was no way in a couple of days that I was going to learn this man's entire catalog. I mean, I worked for him and didn't even get his entire catalog in two days. He really has 
um, an amazingly large, incredible scope of, of music uh, in his library and stuff that he hasn't released, and then stuff that he likes to listen to and stuff that he wants to play that's maybe other people's music. So it's really um, a very, very large scope of music that he lives and breathes every day. So we, st- we played for about two days, uh, and it was actually at that time it was just Prince, myself, and Kirk Johnson was the drummer. And we just, we just jammed and played some things and played a bunch of different styles and, and then hung out. And what was really cool, um, he asked me to play. He was doing Emancipation at that time. It wasn't finished yet. And he asked me to play on, on two songs. And I had decided before I left that I was going to bring a fretless because I wanted to bring some things that maybe I thought other people hadn't brought to his music. And um, the two songs that he had me play on, I used fretless on both of them, which was really, really a kicker. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, you mentioned around that time when he was leaving Warner Brothers and um, a very um, fruitful time for Prince within that year. It seems like he was releasing albums almost every year, sometimes more than once. I mean, that must have been really kind of a crash course to, to learn all that while that was going on. It absolutely was, and to play every day, you know, I mean, seriously, it's um, not comparative to, to the Army. It's like the Special Forces when you're, when you're hanging with him and when you're in his band. It's really, it's really, really great if you can hang. It's the most amazing training. You're playing all the time, and uh, he's just always got a lot of music going on. He's always writing something. He's, always, he's consistently creating, you know, new stuff, great stuff, and wanting to experiment. So it was a great place to be. Was that difficult then? You mentioned uh, trying to learn some of his back catalog. He's the kind of guy that seems to change the set list up all the time. So did you just kind of have to know enough of it in case he pointed to you and decided to go in a new direction? Yeah, ideally. Ideally, yes. Uh, you want to have a lot of it. Um, you know, again, one of, one of my challenges was living in a hotel when I first started working for him and using a boombox to try to listen to his music where obviously you can't play it too loud in the room. So trying to isolate the bass parts and get them right, and sometimes that's a, that was a bit of a challenge because Prince is not always the type of artist who has bass really loud up in your face, you know? It has a tendency to be more laid back into the track. It's there, and it's, and it's pumping, and it's funky, but it's, it's part of it. So sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to distinguish. You know, like I'm, I've seen some music for, for bass, and it kicked drum together depending on how it's mixed. If the kick drum is really loud and the bass is loud, sometimes it, it can confuse the pattern where a bass player can think that maybe the pattern's actually doing more than it is. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. You guys are quiet. <laughs> We're just listening to you, to you talk. I'm, so. talking, I'm talking your ears off. <laughs> no, that's great. That's, that's the whole point. So I don't know if there's many other people that have worked with Prince for as long as you have. Like, is there others that were in the band and, and with him? Oh, I think, there's, I think there's a few. I mean, there's not a lot. You can probably only count them on your hand, but I think there's a few. Definitely Morris Hayes is, is up in there for, you know, years that he's hung in. He was there before I was, um, and has been in, we've all been in different concoctions, you know, of whatever the group was, whatever the MPG was, you know, for a certain period of years, how sometimes it changes, it morphs into other people, you know. Sure. Um, so he's been around for a long time. Um, offhand, I'm not sure who else, because that might have been, anybody else might have been before my time yeah, to well. really know. You know, but there might have been some other cats. Wasn't, was maybe, I don't know, was maybe Fink or somebody around for quite a number of years, maybe? Yeah, he'd probably be the longest uh, other than yourself, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. So you've played with a bunch of other people, uh, and it's a huge kind of wide mixture like Shaka Khan and uh, like Erica Badu and, and Beyonce it like how did this all when did that that stuff all take place and and how did that kind of happen yeah, and a lot of those artists are different you know every situation is different of course Shaka Khan we we when we first started touring with Prince uh, there was a triple bill uh, that we toured for uh, at least a year if not more which was uh, Larry Graham and Graham Central Station was opening, and then Shaka Khan came on next, and then we came on. So we did that tour for quite a while. So um, we got to know Shaka very, very well, did a lot of things together musically. And I also played on, on a record that he, um, he produced for her. 
Um, so that's kind of how that happened. Uh, every little every little story is different. Erica Badu, same thing. That was more of a Prince thing where she definitely came and hung out with him in a certain period of time when we were playing together, whether it was in clubs or whatever, when we were jamming at after parties or what, whatever it was. Um, she was she was definitely around. And who was the third artist that you mentioned? Well, there's so many, but I... I oh, that was Beyonce. Men- Beyonce, yeah, Beyonce definitely had and nothing to do with... Well, did and didn't. Because actually we did the thing with, with Beyonce when we did. We opened the Grammys with um, Beyonce and Prince when they did the duet together. So we did that number, which was huge. But I also did some stuff out, outside of Prince with her, like uh, played with her when she did the promo for the Austin Powers movie. Okay. So we did um, oh quite a lot, and it was a completely different band. And actually, Sheila E. was running that for her. So it really didn't have anything to do with Prince. But uh, we had a band together for her, and we did a lot of morning shows in New York and did all the, the morning promo for her. So every story is different. Yeah, it must be awesome to be able to just kind of be flexible enough, a player, to just kind of go whatever direction <laughs> that you please, I guess. I hope to be. You know, you've got to keep working on it all the time, every, every day. That's, what, that's the great thing about music. You know, you never, you never stop learning. So, of course, then, you know, even going this other direction with Jeff Beck, that is hugely different uh, than, than what you had been doing previously, I'm assuming. Talk to us about that and, and kind of how that happened. Well, again, that was another amazing little feat. I was actually, uh, I was actually doing, again, a little, some little off dates and doing some morning, New York morning promo for an artist called Catherine Fee, who's, a, who's an actress too, but she's a great singer. And, and, and great gal. We were doing some some shows with her when um, I was in touch with with the management from Jeff Beck, who were looking to just do some changes. And actually, Narada Michael Walden, the drummer, uh, recommended me for the gig. So that's really how it happened. And they were trying to do something uh, relatively quickly because Jeff had um, a tour coming up that they were going to start with, which was the double bill at that time with him and Eric Clapton. So um, that's what we were pushing towards. And so did the same thing, brought some different instruments, brought some different things, and they liked what, we, what, I, what they heard. So it went off from there. And Jeff was very, very, very busy um, from 2010 to 2012. We went all over the world, a uh, lot of shows, just, just a lot of stuff. It was really, really great. And it started off with the Grammys, where he won uh, five Grammys. In Jan- we started rehearsals right at the beginning of January because I think, I think the, the tour started either February or the end of January. We were just rehearsing right there. We started off with the Grammys. Bam, he wins five Grammys. Then we go out and do the Eric Clapton thing, which was really, really great. Huge, huge rooms, you know, Madison Square Garden and, and the O2 and everything. And then we went around the world with him for two years, really, really busy. They really loved that record that he had. And it was really... Um, it was really, really great, and it broke my heart a little bit because, you know, Prince at that time was trying to get me to come and and see if I was available to do some stuff with him. But we had taken so many breaks in between that I just unfortunately got involved in some other things, and it, the train just started rolling so quickly that I just wasn't able to jump off. Which happens with musicians sometimes. Sometimes we have to juggle in life. Yeah, and I'm, it seems like uh, playing with Jeff Beck was, was pretty successful. Anyhow, And um, you appeared in one of the Crossroads, I guess one of the years they did that on the DVD set and everything. You appeared on that as well. Was that in 2010? Yeah, I think that's right. Yes, it was in 2010. And mm-hmm. that's pretty cool um, f- to show you in a light even where you had like your upright on stage, I think. Yeah. I remember you had like the upright, you had cool shades, super sexy boots, <laughs> and you were ripping it up. It, it was, was hot awesome. as anything out there. You should have seen it. It was great. But that's what I love about Jeff's gig too, you know. Not a lot of people not a lot of people knew that I had a fusion background that I did anything else. Sometimes when you play with an artist that you play with, people might assume that maybe that's the only style that you do. But um I grew up on a lot of fusion, on a lot of other stuff that I love to play, but just did it with other groups, but didn't have an opportunity to do it a lot, a lot, a lot like I like to. So Jeff's thing was, is, I mean, it's just great, man. You just go out there and, and, and knock it out. And on top of it, when I get a situation where I can have acoustic and electric and a fretless, 
I'm good to go. <laughs> yeah, it seems like even the people that you choose to play with, it seems like you need to have your chops because even like I've seen Jeff Beck and it seems like he's the type of guy also that can just kind of go whatever direction maybe or like he does sort of very rock and roll things, jazz things, classical renditions. How do you keep up with all that? You know, again, you got to be on you got to be on top of your stuff. You have to be a nice person. <laughs> Get along <laughs> with people first of all. And you know, just respect the music and and number one, try to try to respect the music. If somebody wants to learn something, learn it and try to retain it and you know, just all that kind of stuff. And then hopefully if you don't know stuff, people will throw you a bone, you know, and they won't throw you under the under the bus. Yeah. So then you also uh had some solo albums. Um, talk to us about that. How how did you juggle all that stuff and do some solo projects also? Uh, you know, I normally was able to put the solo projects in when I was on a break, generally from Prince, because he can get quite busy. And the writing process is just a completely different place for me, especially for my own records that I do very rarely. I have to be in, I have to be in that headspace to be able to do it. And sometimes when I'm touring and doing other things, uh, it's not possible. So, um... I have two records out in Telepop that I put out um, in 2000, actually. And the other one is called RS2. And that came out in, I believe, 2000... I have to look at that. I think it's 2008. I think it's 2008. I've got a new one I'm working on. So you're working on another one right now? Yep, it's going to be hot. But <laughs> no guarantees it's going to be out this year because we're really busy with touring and... I'm I'm actually working on a, a book right now that I'm trying to uh, have ready for the deadline. So that's taking a little bit of precedent. So when can we expect to see you on the road with uh, Jeff Beck again? We are starting our first show, my guys, on the uh, 8th of August in uh, Missoula, Montana with ZZ Top and Jeff Beck. Tyler Bryant's going to be opening. He's absolutely amazing. And uh, we're going to be out for about five weeks. We end uh, September 14th. Cool. And it's all in the U.S. Although we do not have any Minnesota dates. This is tragic. Serious bummer. <laughs> yeah, maybe next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, you mentioned the no, book. Is is there anything else you want to, uh, I guess, plug while we're while we're going at it here? That's coming up. Oh, uh, what else is coming up? The end of this beautiful year. Well, I'm going to take a, an amazing vacation. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like you need one. Oh, yeah, I need one. I definitely need one. But I'm blessed. Definitely very happy about it. And very happy for you guys to have asked me to do this. This was a lot of fun. Definitely. I've talked your ears off, I think. No, it's definitely interesting. We appreciate you being on with us. It's definitely been great. It was my pleasure, you guys. It was my pleasure. I need to uh listen to you more often. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can. And I gotta I have to do it because basically we've been trying to get um uh, we do a thing every year called Princemas, where we play nothing but Prince, and so that's why we've been uh, we've been trying to get many people. Um, I had an, an extra interest in you besides the, the Prince thing, but if you are at all somehow talking to Prince, feel free to let him know that we're nice guys. That's <laughs> <laughs> all I have to say. Because <laughs> that's all the, I have to say is, what did you do? Yeah. <laughs> No, it just seems impossible to get him on the phone at all. But anyhow, uh, it, it's been a real pleasure having you on. It's uh, been fantastic. Thank you, guys. Hope to run into you soon. Beautiful. Thanks Beautiful. a lot, Rhonda. Thanks a lot, Rhonda. Yeah, bye-bye. Bye-bye.